This is Story Recapped. Today, I'm going to explain a fantasy horror film called Wishmaster 2 Evil Never Dies. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. In the late hours of the night, three burglars enter a museum to steal valuable items. The alarm immediately blares when one burglar breaks a glass box that houses a golden cup. A security guard arrives before they can escape. The guard fires his gun at the burglars, hitting one of them. Then, he accidentally hits the statue of the Persian deity, Ahura Mazda. The statue breaks open to reveal a fire opal inside. A burglar takes the opal before escaping. As the thieves find a way out of the museum, a guard intercepts them and shoots one of them. Another burglar immediately fires back and kills the guard. When the burglar named Eric checks on his partner, Morgana, he sees that the fire opal stopped the guard's bullet. Morgana suddenly drops the broken gem because it burns her hand. Soon, another guard arrives and shoots Eric twice. Morgana takes Eric's gun and kills the guard before he can shoot her. Weakened by his injuries, Eric tells Morgana that he loves her and asks her to leave him behind. Soon after Morgana flees, a tentacle shoots out of the opal and latches onto a wall. A pulsating mass of flesh starts growing on the wall until the djinn emerges. While the monstrous djinn crawls on the ground, he tells Eric that he can give him everlasting life or end his suffering. Due to his fear and desperation, Eric wishes that he's never been born. Eric screams in pain, and as the djinn grants his wish by regressing him into an infant until he vanishes. The police soon arrive while the djinn transforms his body so he can stand up and walk. The djinn then telekinetically takes the broken pieces of the opal and puts them back together. An officer sees the djinn and orders him to freeze. The sly djinn interprets the command as a wish and covers the policeman in ice. By the time the other officers arrive, the djinn has transformed himself into a human. He surrenders to the police without resistance or dirty tricks. The next day, the djinn, who now identifies as Nathaniel Demarest, confesses to the robbery and the murder of two security guards. Detective Hostica refuses to believe he acted alone, so he surmises that Demarest is covering for someone else. Demarest tries to goad Hostica into making a wish, but the detective just gets impatient and puts him back behind bars. Days later, Morgana learns from the news that Demarest pleaded guilty to the crimes. Despite Demarest's guilty plea, the police still have questions about the case because they never found the murder weapon and the stolen paintings. The news further reveals the statue of Ahura Mazda was damaged, but experts believe that it can still be restored. Morgana gets upset when the news mentions the funeral arrangements for the security guard she shot. As Demarest waits in a holding cell to be transferred to a prison, he convinces a detainee to make a wish. The detainee asks Demarest for his shoes, but he contends that he can give the man anything he wants. The man refuses to believe him, but he plays along and says he wants to leave the prison by walking through the bars. The djinn grants his wish by using his powers to squeeze the man's body and crush his head to make it fit through the narrow bars. Meanwhile, Morgana tosses and turns on her bed as she sees the djinn's demonic face in her dream. Afterward, she hears the djinn's voice, telling her to fulfill the prophecy because she was the one who woke him. The following day, Morgana visits a church and visits her ex-lover Gregory, who now serves as a priest. Gregory isn't happy to see her at the church, so Morgana discloses she's there to talk about an urgent matter. Morgana then asks Gregory if he believes in Satan. Morgana doesn't elaborate, thinking that Gregory wouldn't believe her. Morgana then reveals that Eric passed away. Gregory expresses sympathy, but he contends that Eric was not the right man for her. He attempts to give her a sermon but Morgana argues that it's not what she needs at the moment. At the penitentiary, Demarest overhears an inmate named Grease telling another prisoner about his case. Grease complains that the charges against him are bogus, but his lawyer made a plea bargain that resulted in a three to five year prison sentence. Demarest interrupts their conversation when he hears Grease saying his lawyer should screw himself for failing to defend him. Grease berates Demarest for interrupting, so the djinn appeases him by claiming that he can make Grease's lawyer screw himself in exchange for his soul. As soon as Grease tells Demarest to make it happen, Tilliver, the prison guard, approaches Grease to tell him that his lawyer is there to see him. Suddenly, an inmate named Butts arrives with his two henchmen, the Tiger Brothers, to warn Demarest against conducting any business inside prison without his permission. 
In the visitation room, the lawyer informs Greece that he found a procedural error in his case, making it possible to drop all charges against Greece. While the lawyer explains his plans, he suddenly starts groaning in pain. Greece immediately calls a guard as the lawyer's body starts to bend in a particular manner. Greece grows concerned about his case as the lawyer begins screwing himself. Due to her nightmares about the djinn, Morgana decides to search for information about Ahura Mazda. She finds out that the deity is known as the Keeper of the Stone of the Secret Fire. When Gregory arrives to check on her, Morgana hesitantly tells him that she's been having nightmares about people dying and a voice telling her to fulfill the prophecy. Gregory apologizes for what he had said about her relationship with Eric. Morgana then notes that she's not sure if Eric is dead because she didn't see any reports about him. When Gregory asks why she assumes he's dead, she confesses that they were in a robbery together and she killed the man who shot Eric. Gregory advises Morgana to tell the police, but she says she still needs to know more about the man haunting her dreams. Later, Morgana takes a bus to the penitentiary to visit Demarest. In the laundry room, an inmate named Osip Krutchkov approaches Demarest because he heard that he is a devil who grants wishes in exchange for souls. Osip hints that he wants Demarest to grant him more than one wish but the djinn notes that he can only grant him one because of the rules. Osip encourages him to break the rules and offers to help the djinn with his goals. Their conversation is interrupted when Tilliver arrives to tell Demarest that he has a visitor. When Demarest reaches the visitation room, he is not too surprised to see Morgana waiting. Demarest notes that he's been expecting Morgana, but she points out that they've never met. Demarest then reveals that he was hiding in the museum during the robbery. Morgana then asks Demarest about the prophecy but the djinn claims she will find out when the time is right. Before Morgana leaves, he flashes an image of his demonic form in Morgana's mind. Demarest agrees to kill a man for an inmate in exchange for his soul, and a pack of cigarettes. Butts notices the transaction, so he asks Demarest for his cut. Demarest refuses to give Butts anything, but he offers to grant him anything he wants. Butts still insists on taking a cut from Demarest's supposed earnings, so he gives him the pack of cigarettes, thinking that Demarest is a drug dealer. He tells him that he wants to get wasted. Instead of giving him drugs, Demarest grants his wish by compelling the Tiger brothers to beat him up. Soon, Tilliver arrives to stop the brothers from beating butts. He suspects Demarest of inciting the recent troublesome incidents at the penitentiary, so he throws Demarest in solitary for a week. As Morgana continues her research about Uhura Mazda, she learns about a djinn who laid waste to the court of Persia. The djinn sought to wreak havoc on the entire world, but the king's alchemist trapped him inside the fire red opal with an incantation. Morgana discovers that the Ahura Mazda was enlisted to guard the stone and keep the djinn trapped in the space between worlds. A strong gust of wind suddenly blows inside her apartment while she's reading about the djinn. Morgana visits the church again to tell Gregory about the djinn in her nightmares, but Gregory thinks she's just under a lot of stress because of Eric's death. Morgana hints that Gregory would be terrified if he sees the djinn, so he agrees to visit Demarest in prison to see why Morgana is afraid of him. When he sees Demarest, Gregory tells him to leave Morgana alone. Demarest merely taunts him by mimicking Morgana's voice and speaking to him seductively. Gregory leaves the prison after realizing that there's something supernatural about Demarest. Later, Gregory and Morgana continue their research on the djinn and discover that he aims to trap 1,001 souls inside the fire opal by granting each person a wish. Then, he must grant three wishes to the one who freed him, so he could unleash his brethren into the world and destroy humanity. The 1,001 souls will be released back into the world if the djinn fails. Morgana and Gregory soon realize that Demarest is in prison to collect souls. Gregory advises Morgana to steer clear of Demarest and avoid making wishes. He then notes that Demarest can only be sent back to the opal by someone pure. Later, Morgana performs a ritual to purify herself. She cuts her pinky finger on her left hand and secretly returns the painting to the museum to atone for her wrongdoings. At the penitentiary, Demarest tells Ossip that it's time to escape because he can't find any inmates willing to trade their souls for a wish. Suddenly, Tilliver confronts Demarest due to the increase of untoward incidents at the penitentiary. He tells Demarest that he'll put him back in solitary, but he inadvertently makes a wish to go head to head with Demarest for one minute. Demarest grants his wish by taking him to the boiler room and showing him his true appearance. Later, Tilliver approaches Ossip and asks him how badly he wants to leave the penitentiary. Ossip pretends that he wants to stay, but he soon realizes that Demarest is disguising himself as Tilliver when he tells Ossip that it's time to escape. Soon, 
Another guard enters the boiler room and discovers Tilliver's mutilated body. Ossip finally makes his wish to leave the prison, so the djinn opens the gate for him. Morgana immediately goes to the church to inform Gregory that Demarest escaped with Ossip. Gregory notes that he knows Ossip because he murdered two men in his parish. Gregory then reveals that Ossip usually hangs out at Club Siberia. As Ossip celebrates his freedom at the club, his boss Pushkin arrives to criticize him. When Pushkin goes to another room, Ossip asks Demarest for another wish to become the mob boss, but he reminds him that he has already granted him a wish and he can't break the rules. Ossip then decides to introduce Pushkin to Demarest and tells him that he can grant any wish. Pushkin asks Demarest for the head of his rival, Mustafa. So Demarest grants the wish by replacing his head with Mustafa's. The gang members suddenly point their guns at Pushkin and take him away, thinking he's Mustafa. Ossip celebrates as he becomes the new boss, but Demarest grows frustrated because he still needs 800 more souls. Ossip claims that he knows where to find more souls, but Morgana arrives and shoots Demarest before he can tell him. Ossip is shocked to see Demarest reverting to his demonic form because of the wound. After healing his wound, Demarest offers to resurrect Eric as a free wish, but Morgana runs out of the club in fear. Gregory finds Morgana at the church in despair as she loses hope in stopping Demarest. Gregory encourages her that they can stop him with God's help. Later, they go back to the club to ask Ossip where Demarest went. Ossip realizes that the only way to stop Demarest is to kill Morgana to keep her from making three wishes. Ossip shoots Morgana twice, but she remains unharmed. In the search for more souls, Demarest goes to a casino and claims to represent the company's Eastern European partners. While touring the establishment, the manager, Mr. Farallon, tells him that the casino wishes every patron the best of luck to encourage guests to keep betting. Later, Ossip informs Morgana that he bought her and Gregory plane tickets to find Demarest and stop him from acquiring 800 souls. Unbeknownst to Morgana, Demarest is impersonating Ossip to draw her to the casino. When Gregory arrives at Morgana's place, he reveals that he found the alchemist's incantation to put the djinn back into the fire opal. Gregory notes that a woman of pure heart has to speak the words to imprison the djinn. Morgana is skeptical about the incantation, but Gregory points out it's their only chance. Back at the casino, the guards struggle to keep the crowd outside as they learn that every guest is inexplicably winning their bets. While sitting in an office, the djinn decides to claim the souls of everyone who made a wish through him, including some of the guests at the casino. Morgana screams in terror as she sees the souls being pulled into the opal. When the reaping stops, Morgana realizes that the djinn has all the souls he needs. When Morgana and Gregory arrive at the casino, they head straight to confront Demarest in the office. Demarest urges Morgana to make her wish, so Morgana wishes that the djinn would disappear for eternity. However, Demarest notes that she can't make a wish that changes the eternal. The prophecy circumscribes wishes about him, so she can't wish to make him return to the opal. Gregory soon finds the opal, so he grabs it and chants the incantation but it does not affect Demarest. The gem suddenly vanishes from Gregory's hand and reappears in Demarest's. In his frustration, Gregory wishes Demarest into hell, but the djinn grants it by taking him and Morgana into the opal. The djinn then crucifies Gregory, deducing that it is what the priest always wanted. As the djinn inflicts more suffering upon Gregory, Morgana tearfully uses her first wish to release Gregory. The djinn grants it by taking Gregory's life to release him from all suffering. The djinn then brings Morgana back to the casino to provoke her into making her next two wishes. They immediately come across Farallon, who's weary because of the casino's losses. Farallon wishes for the nightmare to end, so the djinn imprisons the patrons inside and transforms the objects at the casino into killing machines. As Farallon and other patrons scramble to escape, the djinn releases bugs that consume Farallon's flesh. When the djinn urges Morgana to make her wish, Morgana asks him about the meaning of the prophecy. The djinn quotes the part of the prophecy that says the djinn will reign over the earth after granting three wishes to the one who woke him. Morgana soon realizes that the prophecy does not end there. She quotes a part that says the alchemist took the opal in his hand like he's a woman, with a pure heart taking in God's light into her soul before reciting the incantation. Morgana suddenly wishes that the security guard she shot is alive. After the djinn grants the wish, Morgana realizes that her purity is now restored, so she grabs the opal from the djinn's hand and chants Nib Sugarath Bahim. As she repeats the words, the souls of the people Demarest claim begin flying out of his body. 
Gregory soon emerges and finds himself back in the casino. After all the souls are restored, the opal pulls the djinn's soul back inside. Morgana embraces Gregory and tells him that the djinn is gone. Inside the opal, the djinn grunts in frustration for failing to release his brethren upon the earth. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.